Hey guys, and welcome back to the Touchline Podcast, bringing you guys a brand new video. Uh, the Premier League is around the corner, five days to go, and we thought we'd bring you guys our season predictions for the 23-24 season. It's going to be a banger of a season. We're looking forward to it. Man City strengthened, Arsenal strengthened, so it's going to go down to the wire this year. As you can see, Shabelle's wearing his Arsenal uh, kit. I'm wearing my Bulldogs kit, but... He's not proud to be a United fan. No, no, I'm, I'm supporting them <laughs> thick and thin, so... We'll get underway. We're going to go do our ladder predictions first. Shabal, who do you have in the relegation? So should I just say the bottom three? Yeah, say, but say them in the positions you've put so them in. In 20th, I've got Luton Town. Then I've gone Sheffield United and Nottingham Forest. So why so, have you put them? So first of all, Luton Town. Um, just newly promoted side. They've never been in the Premier League. For, I think they've never been in the Premier League um, competition. So yeah, yeah just... Time. Small stadium, I just don't think they're going to cope well, especially with the big teams like Arsenal, United. I just don't think they're Premier League um, ready yet. But you never know. Premier League's full of surprises. Football's full of surprises, as we know. Um, yeah, I've just put them that low. Sheffield United, I think they'll have a good track at it. I think they'll be pretty decent. Like, the point systems I've had is quite close to 16th to 15th, but... Same in Luton. I think they'll be up there. I think they'll have a crack, good fight. They were in the Premier League a couple of seasons ago. They weren't that bad. It was during lockdown. But yeah, I put them 19th. I think they'll be a bit short with the players they have. And Nottingham Forest, last year they just survived relegation. They had a moment during the season where they did pretty well. Um, hadn't lost in quite um, a few games. But yeah, I think this is the year they um, officially get relegated. Yeah, well, I've I've gone the same thing. Luton down twentieth, Sheffield and Nottingham. Um, I think both all these teams will struggle. Um, Sheffield United, the last time they were in the Premier League, um, when they were newly promoted, they came in and really surprised the whole competition. So, look, it could happen again. Um, we know what Sheffield are made of, but if I'm really looking at it, I feel there's other teams, other poor teams that are better than them, like yeah, the right. Wolves, um, Everton. I feel they'll just cross the line. Um, not again, Forest. Um, this one could go either way. I wasn't um, a hundred percent sure about putting them 18th, but I think with the other teams um, in the league, I think they'll just do better. So I'm putting not again just to to um, miss out on the safety safety zone. But yeah, man, I think I think those three teams are uh, look cemented that they could get relegated. But in the Premier League, there's always that one team that surprises you. Uh, both yeah. uh, making the Luton. Yeah, Luton could uh, play fantastic because it's their first season. So, yeah, I've gone Luton, Sheffield, uh, then Nottingham. Um, yeah, good. But, yeah, um, so 17th, 16th, 15th, I've went Everton, Wolves, uh, then Bournemouth. I think um, Wolves, they've um, they've signed um, Akuna. Uh, I think it's Akuna. Yeah. Um, permanently. Um, they had him on loan last year. And they bought him. They paid fifty million for him. For me, um, I think it's not money well spent. I think they could have used that money wisely. Fifty million on a player like him, he wasn't the best last uh, season for them. So, um, Wolves were one of the teams I actually had probably going to get relegated, but I put them just above the safety zone. We've seen Wolves throughout the years just just surviving. They've made it uh, midway table, but um, as the years have went by, they've slowly went down the ladder. So. Um, with Everton, the same thing. I think it's going to be another tough season for them. New stadium. Sometimes those um, new stadium vibes, feelings around the club usually doesn't work out. Usually goes against um, the club. If you look at Tottenham, for example, uh, their new stadium, and they, they really struggle to hit form after leaving White Hart Lane. So, yeah, I think Everton, yeah, they're going to struggle. Sean Dyche, of course, um, he's known to keeping teams up. So I think he'll do the same um, with Everton. And Bournemouth, I think Bournemouth, look, I've put in 15th, but I wouldn't be surprised if they fin finished higher. I think they've got some good players. Um, what's called Cliver just joined. They've got um, Solanke, Anthony. So they've got very good players. And I think if they can really hit form, hit running at the start of the season, it will, it will really do them wonder. So, yeah, that's my position from 17th to 15th. For me, um, 17th, I put Bournemouth. Um, I just feel their team, I think, like you've mentioned, they've got a good, solid team. Young team, you, Justin Cliver signing, they've got Solanke, um, Beeling as well. But I just feel they're just a few inches away from really struggling. 
you could see towards the end of the season they struggled. And I just feel if, say, Solanka was to get injured or um, Billing was to get injured, they were the two best players last year. Yeah. And I fear that if one of them was to get injured, it could really affect them and they can really be um, competing for the relegation um, relegation spot. So, yeah, I put them 17th. I put Palace 16th. I think it's going to be a hard season for them. As we've seen, Josh, um, Roy Hodgson just joined the club. Towards the end of the season, their club going through a bit of a crisis, sacking Patrick Vieira. Um, losing Wilfred Zaha, as we know, which is a big loss for them. They've got Aloisi um, as a few good players, are you? So they've got still a solid pack, a solid team. But just, I don't know, just something about them. Without Zaha, who's been their biggest threat for, I don't know how long since he's been at the club. So that's a big loss. The fans will be quite devastated losing him. Um, and I put Everton 15th. I think they'll be, I think they'll improve. I don't think they're going to go through what they've been going through for the last two seasons. I think they've learned from that. They've got a well experienced manager that knows how to overcome this, the situation that they were in the last two seasons, fighting for the relegation spot to not avoid that um, position again. So they've got a good team, but they'll improve slightly. But I put them 15 just just for that reason and just because they've got a good coach in Sean, um, Sean Dice. Yeah, well, um, sort of... Go first? Um, yeah, go first, but sort of the same teams in the 17th to 15th position. Uh, now we move on to 14th to 10th. So uh, who did you go? So for 14th, I've got West Ham. I think they'll, they're will they going to struggle this year. They haven't signed a lot of players. They've lost their best player in Declan Rice who joined Arsenal. they still got... Um, a few good players, Bowen, Smacker, they've got Danny Yings. I, I wouldn't count them, out, um, count them off of possibly having a good season. Maybe they will finish top 10. But what I've seen in the summer transfer window, well, summer transfer window for England, it's here winter, but they haven't really impressed me with the signings. Their fans are pretty um, pissed off with the, the board, not signing any players. They've sold Declan Rice for $105 million, So you start to question why they're not using that money. I so think I think that's... I think that's installments. Installments, but still, they've got 90 million out of it. But still, that's enough to spend. So I think they're going to be having another um, bad season. Yeah. I think Wolverhampton Wanderers will do pretty decent. 13th is still a decent position for them. I think they've got a solid team. I really like their coach, what he's implemented in the squad. You've got, I don't know if Diego Costa is still there. I haven't done my research on that. They've still got a decent squad. I really like the way they play. They, they're defensively solid. Atta they're, they're always known to be a team that's not the best attacking league. They always last on one the... Um, one new 1-1. They don't score a lot of goals, but I like the coach. And because of that coach, what he's done to them since joining, I think they can finish maybe a bit higher because two years ago, they were always finishing in the top 10. Yeah. Top 8 with him, Raul Jimenez. They had um, Ruben Neves. Um, so, yeah, I think they'll finish 13th. I'll put Fulham 12th. I think it's going to be an up-and-down season again for them. Just like last season, Burnley, I put 11th. I think under Vincent company, company, what he's installed within that club, he's installed that winning mentality, mentality just like what Pep Guardiola has done to City. So he's learned a lot from um, Guardiola and now he's put that into the Burnley squad. They're known to be a team that's been always fighting for the relegation spot. But honestly, I think they are the underdogs this year. They could potentially finish higher than um, 10th. Because Vincent Company, they, they've got a good structure, good playing style. So I really, really want them to do well because I don't have anything against Burnley. And ever since they've been in the Premier League, I've been quite, I've always liked them and I've, I've had a soft spot for them. And also Brentford, I've put them 10th. Without Ivan Tony, they're not going to be pushing for European football. With him, I think they could have potentially finished top six. But yeah, I put them 10th. I think they'll just finish halfway there. Yeah, well, I'm going to agree with you on the West Ham. I put him 14th. Um, yeah, with Declan Rice leaving, uh, not signing any players, very poor investments. I think it's turning out to be a very tough season for them again. But I really think they're going to do good in the Europa League. I think they're going to try and focus on that. Um, but with Liverpool in it, it could prevent them from winning it. So I think West Ham's going to have that another season where they're struggling in the league. But when it comes to Europa League and uh, Europe, I think um, their priorities on that. So I'll, I'll put them 14th. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they went a bit higher. Um, 13 Burnley, uh, Vincent Company, as you as you know, um, they were first in the EFL Championship. 
Uh, but of course, coming into the Premier League, it's always different. Um, higher, higher quality players, it's always tougher. But I like what Vincent Company's done. I think out of the three newly promoted teams, I think Not Burnley well. are the ones that are going to probably cause cause a bit of problems, not too much. Um, but yeah, I think 13th is a good spot. I think I agree with you. I wouldn't be surprised if they did finish higher. Um, if you look at, as you said, Pep Guardiola, Arteta, look how he's become. He's become one of the best managers in the world of recently. Uh, Vinter Company, I, I wouldn't say he's probably going to be the best in the world. Um, you don't know, but he's still in his... He's still, um, uh, still learning. Early still days, early days. Yeah, early days. He's still learning, developing. So he's got time. Uh, he's got a. Um, he's got time. But yeah, I think Burnley. Um, they're in. They're in, they're in for a good season. So yeah. I'm going to put them 13th. Uh, 12th. I'm going Crystal Palace. Zaha's left, uh, which is a big miss. He's usually carrying the team. Um, yeah, they've got some few good players. As a Elise. So yeah, Crystal Palace. I think they're always in the mid mid table. Isn't his no, name Aloisi, whatever. Yeah, Aloisi. Aloisi, yeah, Aloisi something. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I think nothing's too special about Palace. I think they're going to be a mid table team. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they done uh, if they went below twelfth, maybe 15, 16, um, because they, they've been fighting. They've been fighting in the Premier League for quite a while, and then they, yeah. they haven't had that dip. They've had that rise under. Uh, Patrice Evra, um, not Patrice Evra, sorry, um, Patrick Vieira, sorry. Vieira. Um, and <laughs> I'm, su I'm surprised they they sacked him. So um, it's I think it's been tough ever since he I left. I think they've lost their spark a bit. Yeah, they've lost their identity a bit because he was really doing something, Patrick Vieira. And yeah, look, yeah. as a manager, you're going to go through those times where um, not, it's not going your way. You're trying to learn. You're trying to develop. Um, right, yeah. those, moments, those moments sometimes make you greater, uh, like a, a better manager. So I think they didn't give him the time that he deserved. But what can you do? Um, he's left, and yeah, Palace are in a situation where they're going to try and um, just forget about him and just try and um, move up that table. Eleventh, uh, um, I went Fulham. Um, Mitrovic was rumored to leave, as well as Marco Silva. But oh, yeah. it's a real benefit that they're both staying. They played both played big roles in their success last season. Um, they had a dip at the end of the season, which put them down the ladder a bit. But for the majority of the season, they were eighth, um, seventh. So they were really doing good. So I think with uh, Marco Silva and uh, what's it called, Mitrovic staying, I think it's going to be a real boost. And I think they'll finish around the mid-table mark. And Brentford, of course, um, they're a strong team, solid team. Thomas Frank has put a great system into um, the, the squad. The players are liking what he's doing. But with Ivan Tony there, I think it's going to be a bit of a problem. And Buemo is a very good player. I think he's, he's the one to watch. I think he can really lead them um, to doing something great. But I think the other teams that have got above them um, have more potential. So, yeah, I'm sticking with uh, Brentford 10th. So, um, Sammy, now we, you, you'll say 9th to 6th. Okay, so 9th to 6th. Ninth, I've went Brighton. Um, it might be a surprise to a few uh, Premier League fans, but... I just think Brighton, look, I think they're still going to have a very good season. Um, I think that with the Europa Europa League football, they're not new, they're new to that. So with having an FA Cup, the Carabao Cup, the Premier League and now the Europa League, it's going to really put some, um, make, uh, put for some tired legs um, in the players. So I think it's going to be a real challenge for them. De Zerbi has did a, did a very um, great job for them last season. Um, they might fall off a bit in, in terms of the Europa League, um, more matches being played. So, yeah, I think ninth position, I think I'm, I'm happy where I've put them. Uh, Tottenham eighth, I think they're going to be much, much better than they were in previous seasons. Um, Ange um, Postoglugu is he's doing good. You can see that they're attacking, they're, they're making passes, they're always up, up and down, um, up the pitch, sorry. So, yeah, I'm happy with that appointment. Like, if you're a Spurs fan, I think he's going to really do good. I think it's just going to be an adjustment period for him. Um, I think eighth spot um, wouldn't. I don't think Tottenham fans would um, accept it, but I think if they're getting eighth, maybe sneak a in the trophy. trophy. Yeah, maybe a Carabao Cup. Then the fans will start to have belief that there's a system and that yeah he's taking them somewhere. So I think I put Tottenham eighth. Aston Villa, I think in seventh place. I think they're going to have a really good season. Um, they're in the Conference League. But I feel Unai Emery is a, a very good manager. Um, you see what he done at Villarreal. He won the Europa League. And I think he's really got a great system there. He's got brought in Yuri Tillemans. Um, Ollie Watkins is shining. Um, even um, Archer um, from 
he's a reserve striker. He's doing good as well. So I think now these players be, uh, like believe in Uno Emery and what he's doing. And I think now it's time they take it another notch. I put him seven, but I, I think they could really fight for that top four spot. And I think it's exciting, fan, uh, exciting times for the Aston Villa fans. But yeah, I'm going um, Aston Villa seventh. And then final six, I've went Newcastle United. Um, Champions League now. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be a tough season for them because, again, the more matches played. And a lot of these positions are put is based on based off the fact that they've got European football. So a lot of these yeah. teams won't be performing as well as they, they want to because um, of these, uh, these more fixtures. But, yeah, I, I think Newcastle United, of course, they're going to be fighting for the top four. But, yeah, I think they're six. I think the other teams are more stronger. One of them don't have European football, so they're, they've got a new manager, so they're focused. So, yeah, um, Newcastle six. But as I said, they could still get the top four spot. So, move on to me. Um, I've put ninth, Aston Villa. Um, I was going to put them seventh what you put them. But the only reason why I put them ninth is I feel the other teams above them um, seem more, I don't know, just... You expect more from them, what they've seen over the years. They're always finishing top seven, top eight. Villa, just because, yes, they've got a good system um, implanted by Unai Emery, but Unai Emery seems to have that season where things can start to go wrong. You can yeah. see Arsenal, things went wrong his way, um, his way sorry. Um, PSG, towards the end of his career at PSG, he started to dip a bit, the performances from the club. So last season, don't get me wrong, they were exceptional. A really exciting team, attacking team. Defensively, they were very good towards the end of the season with the likes of Mings. So, yeah, I've put them ninth just because of that reason, but I wouldn't be surprised if they finish higher. In eighth position, I put Tottenham Hotspur. Um, look, they've got a good manager. I think he's a very good manager, up and coming manager, Australian coach. Um, just Madison got a few good signings. Still not um, convinced about their keeper. I think they needed a more experienced keeper because in the Premier League, it's a bit different towards um, compared to the other leagues this keeper has come from. Not sure of the name. Okay. Oh, you don't know him? Yeah. Not sure, but he's from this league. I'm not sure, but Tottenham, it's going to be an up and down season for them. Like you said, there's, there's going to be a system that I think the fans will be happy with. He plays attacking football, which they've lacked over the years. You could see under Jose, they weren't playing the best footy, um, football. Same as Conte, more defensively than attackingly. So I think that's what he's going to bring this season, more attacking football than defensive. But yeah, it's going to be a long season, depending if Kane stays. If he leaves, it could be another bad season for them. It could be below 10th, because that's where all the goals come from. So yeah, I don't think they'll finish any higher than 8th. So I think where they are will be a pretty good one if they were to win a trophy. In seventh, I put Brighton. I think, like you said, you believe that they'll finish ninth because of the European football. But I think they've got a good system. Look at all the players they've signed. They've, they could potentially lose Calcedo soon. Matoma's linked to City now. They've lost... Um, who else have they lost? McAllister they've lost. So they're losing key players. But they know how to um, sign players that are on the level of the players they've just lost. So they don't lose quality because they know how to, they sign the right players that can fill the position well. So European football, yes, that could affect them, but I still think they have the, the team, they have the coach, and they have the staff around them, the squad, to finish possibly higher because I like Brighton. They, I want them to finish possibly Champions League, be something different. But right now, they possibly don't have the squad, but seventh will be, uh, I think, another su um, successful season and a stepping stone. And six, I'll put Chelsea. New coach, new signings. I still think it's going to take time because they were in a real mess last season. But expect better signs from Chelsea. And the Chelsea fans will be um, excited and ready for a new season. Yeah, well, now we're going to go on to fifth to one. So fifth place, I've went Chelsea. Um, you just mentioned Pochettino's there. I think he's going to do like very good for them. He's He's been at the Premier League level. He's coached Tottenham. He brought him second um, to Chelsea in the no to Leicester, sorry, in the 2015-16 season. So I think Pochettino is a very good appointment. I think he knows what he's doing with the club. Um, also with the new players he's brought in. So I think um, the Chelsea fans just got to stay patient. 
They've lost a uh, big players, Kante, um, Kai Havertz, Mason Mount, Eduard Mendy. So the the players that brought him have big fields to shoot, um, to feel sorry. And yeah, I, I think I think that they have potential to do good, especially with no European football. Um, so yeah, um, Chelsea are the team to watch. Um, I think I don't think they have the ability to make the top four, but you you never know, man. Uh, man United missed out uh, Champions League. Um, can't remember, we missed that one season and instantly the next season we made it. So Chelsea uh, know what Champions League football is about, know what it takes to get to top four. So, um, yeah, you can't rule them out uh, of top four. Um, so yeah, fifth, I've yeah. put Newcastle United. I think they're going to be up there. Honestly, they're prob- um, probably, what's it called, one of the best defensive team in the league. They had one of the best defences last year. The reason why I'm saying this but yeah, I don't think they're going to d- drop a lot. They signed um, Tonoli as a new signing. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, they signed H- Tonali. Yeah, sorry. They also signed Harvey Barnes. Yeah. So they've added a lot of quality into the team. Callum Wilson ended the season so strong. Could he extend that form the way he ended it into the new season? And Eddie Howe, he knows what the team is capable of. He's got a good system. He reminds me a bit of Arteta, the way we... Not defensively, we don't defend... But there's going to be a point in the Newcastle's um, project where they're going to be a team that's always attacking. attacking. Because yeah. last season, they're more of a defensive team, but they know how to score goals, keep clean sheets. But yeah, I think Newcastle, they'll have another good season. They'll just miss out on the top four because of their Champions League inexperience. And yeah, that's, why, that's the reason why they're fifth on my, on my prediction. Um, yeah, so now moving into the top four, the first team... Um, the first thing to be in the top four, fourth place, um, Liverpool. Um, I think they're going to have a better season than last season. Um, Europa League isn't a problem. They know how to deal with it, um, with those, those, um, more games. Champions League, of course, high quality, high level. So with the Europa League, I don't think it's going to be a big impact on them. Um, but yeah, Virgil van Dijk now captain. Um, he's got big uh, shoes to fill. Um, he's. I think he's going to have a, a good season. I think there was a lot of criticism on him last season. Is his time up? Should Liverpool sell him? But I think Sue is a world class centre back, and I think, um, yeah, I think Liverpool fans just got to stay patient with him. I think he's going to have a, a wonderful season. I think he's going to lead um, Liverpool back into the top four. Um, Salah still there. Luis Diaz, Nunes, Gakpo. So they've got very good players, um, but I think. What happened last year is still going to creep into this season. I think they're going to have those games where they lose to those teams like Bright, Brighton and Brentford. So I think fourth is a, a, a good shout. I think I'm going to keep them fourth, but I don't see them um, challenging for the title this year. Yeah, um, I put Man United fourth. Look, where you know, I put United fourth, but they could finish eight, maybe third, second. I'm just putting it... It's very close to my point system, the way I've had it on my ladder. So it's very close. They could finish third, second, like I've said. But many United, I just feel uh, Liverpool, I put, let's say I put Liverpool third. The only reason why I put Liverpool ahead of United is because Europa League, they've now entered a new competition. No more Champions League. They've entered a new competition in the Europa League. And now they have a chance to play their B team. So lots of um, big players, star players that Liverpool can have a rest. They don't know to play those big games like the Champions League nights against Madrid, Dortmund, Bayern. So that's something that's an advantage to Liverpool. So that's why I think they'll finish above United. But yeah, United, I, I, um, there's no reason why I put them fourth. It's either they finish third or fourth. But I just think, like I said, Liverpool, Europa League, United Champions League, and United's going to be using their big players as opposed to Liverpool. They'll use their um, younger players and their big players can rest. Yeah, well, I'm going third Man United. Um, I don't see us... Ma- Look, we could come second. I think if Arsenal do have a little blip, it would be probably United second, Arsenal third. But Arsenal, man, I just feel they're, they're maybe just a bit ahead of... Uh, they're a bit of, ahead of us. Uh, but yeah, I think third for United. We've got Onana, we've got Mounts, uh, Hoyland now coming in. So I think we're going to I think we're gonna have a good season. Pre-season, it was... a. Uh, a pretty mixed emotions about it. We've had some good games, some bad games. Um, against uh, who was it? We just uh, against Lens. Sorry, our passing for the first half was very um, poor. I was a bit worried, um, but then second half we really sharpened that up and we 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 put three goals on them. So um, that was a positive. But yeah, I think for Man United, I think third. 
but they could get second. And yeah, a lot of a lot of um, I'm watching a few predictions like the season. A lot of uh, what's called fans are putting United to come out of the top four. Um, I don't I don't know if that would happen because of course Champions League. I think the momentum's building at the club. Tenag knows what he's doing. Now we're passing it from the back. Our defense we keep we kept one of uh, we kept the most clean sheets last season, seventeen. So I think. It's only going to get better. I think defense is solid. Now it's just scoring those goals. So yeah, I've put United third, um, second. Yeah, yeah, we can both say it. Go Arsenal. Yeah, I think Arsenal. Man, look, they're going to be challenging for the title again. And if Man City have a four, if Man City lose that concentration a bit, which they rarely do, they probably never do. Um, Arsenal are going to be on their throat. So. To say Arsenal are going to win the league, I think um, you're, you're not going to sound deluded because look, they put them, they they challenged them right to the end last season. So I think Arsenal, man, they're going to they're going to put a fight again. Maybe this time take it that one step further and get that revenge. That as you know, they defeated them in the Community Shield, so already they got one over them. But yeah, Man City, they're they're too strong with the players they have. Kovacic now probably Matoma. Um, is linked with them. They're just getting stronger. They know how to develop the players. Pep's just put in a great system that's been working for years now. And yeah, he's yeah. It's everyone's tipping City. Everyone's putting them to win it. So if you if you don't want to be boring, you probably go Arsenal, probably United. But yeah, I'm sticking safe. I'm going Man City. Yeah, for me it was my head. Like my heart's telling me we can win this. But if it's look realistic to say we can win the league now, but. For City, what they've done over the last five years, it's just, it's incredible. You cannot put Arsenal ahead of them. I still think we can win it. I think we're the closest to anyone else in the league right now, especially with the signings we've made. But again, City, are, they're just too good. Their squad depth is unbelievable. Yes, we've improved in that department a bit. We've got a stronger bench, but I still think we're not on the level of Man City. Because again, like I've said, they signed Kovacic. They've lost Mares now. Matoma could potentially join um, City before the transfer window closed. So yeah, I'd love to say Arsenal can win the league. I still, th- like I said, I still think we can win it. We've got the squad. We just beat them in the Community Shield, so we've got one um, ahead of them, one over them. So yeah, City they're too strong. I put them first and Arsenal second. Well, that's a wrap up for our uh, ladder predictions. Make sure you leave your guys' uh, ladder uh, predictions in the comments down below. We're going to move on to some other predictions now, starting off with the Golden Boot. Who do you reckon is going to get it, Shavu? Go first quickly. Uh, so, Golden Boot, um, I've, of course, we're early Haaland. I think, I think everyone's going to put him 38 goals last season, something like that in the Premier League. So, you'd only expect him to, to go on and... Um, do even better on that. So, yeah, I think it's a no-brainer. Erling Haaland. Yeah, Erling Haaland, man. You sh- you can see what, like, he's shown the last year nearly 50 goals, was it, or 60 in the whole competition. Yeah, so if, who knows what he can get this year. If City were to keep their consistency, um, have still that desire, that determination to win the league again, to win trophies again, Champions League, whatever, cont- um, et cetera, et cetera. But, yeah, Haaland, you, you can't see anyone finishing... Above him in the Golden Boot race. Yeah, uh, I'm going playmaker of the year, uh, Bruno Fernandez. Um, this one might be a bit controversial because De Bruyne is always up there, Saka is always up there, but Bruno Fernandez is has the most chances created ever since he's joined, and he's always making that killer pass. He's always trying to look for that that pass that's going to lead to a goal. And I think this year Bruno Fernandez is going to have a great season. I think he's been underrated in a way. Uh, people haven't been really appreciating what he does and the player he is. So I think this season he's going to really step up. And yeah, I think he's going to top the assist, assist the board. For me, um, the playmaker of the year, I was between Kevin De Bruyne, Salah and Saka. But I've just had Salah this year. Because you look at it, the last couple of seasons, he's always finished top three. Last year, he was the playmaker of the year. Um, he's got multiple golden boots already, but I think this year he could get playmaker of the year, especially with the attack of Liverpool this se- um, coming up. Diaz, Nunez, they've lost Firmino, but they've still got a Jota. They've got a crazy attack, McAllister. So, yeah, I think this could be his year to get the playmaker of the year. He's got the potential. He's done it before, and I think he can do it again. Uh, manager of the year now. Um, I've went Mikel Arteta. 
Yes, um, the only reason why I've went Arteta because I feel they're the only team that could really go on for the title. So I've put him because I think Arsenal are going to improve um, at another level. And I feel that if they do win the league, he's probably going to get it. So, yeah, that's that's why I've went Arteta. Yeah, you just summed it up. I would have said the same thing. Arteta. For underdogs, yeah. I've went Burnley. I think I said it before, um, just recently on the ladder prediction, my ladder predictions. Vincent Company, he's been trained by one of the best, but probably one of the greatest coaches in, of all time, um, Pep Guardiola. I still think Ferguson's the, the greatest to ever do it, but yeah, he's learned that he's learned a lot from him. You can see what he's trying to do at the club, that system, what he's learned from Guardiola, even Arteta possibly taught him as an assistant coach. So yeah, I think they're gonna they're in for a good season. I, I haven't seen their signings, but if their signings were to do good. It's because of Vincent Company, and I think they've got a good system, good structure, and yeah, I think they're going to have a good season. Um, I've went Aston Villa. I said that I, I think they can really fight for the top four, just like Newcastle did. Unai Emery's just yeah, he's he's brought a good system in the signings they've made, and I just think they'll 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 go um, one step further. They'll go they'll become stronger. They'll become a better team. So yeah, I'm going Aston Villa for that one. Um, um, signing of the year. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it's a new signing from Liverpool, Dominic Sabla. How do you say it? I'm not sure. Yeah, Sablaski or something. I don't know. But yeah, but we'll probably pull a photo while we're editing. But yeah, I think he's gonna have a good season. You look at the um, Liverpool team. He's he's he performed well at RB Leipzig. He's done well. I'm pretty sure he's played for RB Salzburg. Somewhere he's played for a club. I'm not sure. But yeah, I think he's gonna have a good season. I think he's gonna score goals create goals, create chances. And with a, a team like Liverpool, I think he's going to do wonders for the club. Well, um, I went Declan Rice. Um, as I said, I've predicted Man City, but I think Arsenal are the only one that's going to really um, challenge City. I'm not saying United can't, but I just think Arsenal are ahead in their process and where they're trying to go. And I think Declan Rice, if they were to win it, he'd probably be that missing piece that they were missing last Yeah, time. I agree. Yeah, I'm on Declan Rice for that one. So we're going to quickly go through it. Flop. Um, player, so the flop player of the year and flop team of the year. My flop player of the year will be in Cuckoo. Uh, I think, yeah, it's going to be a long season for him. Um, yes, they've got a new coach. Poch is a player that, a coach that can get the best out of players. But I've seen players that come from Germany, they don't seem to suit the style of Premier League because Bundesliga is more of a passing game. It's a bit slow. You look at Havertz, hasn't really worked out for him in the Premier League. Timo Werner hasn't worked out. So the, that's the reasoning why I put in Cuckoo. Look, he's a fantastic player. He's been one great, a great player in the Bundesliga. But heading into the Premier League uh, with top teams like Man City, it's no, no Farmers League. You've got top teams everywhere. Arsenal, United, City, Liverpool, Chelsea, now Brighton, Brentford, Villa. It's a very strong league. And look, I want Adam, if he does good, good on him. I think Potts can get the best out of him, but I just don't see that happening. Uh, well, I've went... Um, my num uh, Man United is number seven, uh, Mason Mounts. I just feel that number seven jersey is cursed. Like we had Depay, Di Maria, Sanchez. It just hasn't work. Ronaldo came back. He done perfect with that number seven because that's his jersey, of course. And then, yeah, Mason Mounts, he he missed an open goal against um, Lenz um, in the preseason friendly. So that's like got flop ridden all over it. So um, I'm a bit worried. I'm worried that that number seven jersey is going to get Get, get to him, the pressure, of course, just like every other player. I hope it doesn't. Of course, I want Mason Mount to succeed. I want him to do good. But, uh, yeah, I'm I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Mason Mount, but I just hope it isn't. Well, quickly, because my laptop's going to die soon. But, yeah, for the team of the year, I'm going Tottenham Hotspurs. Yeah. I've said before they might have a good season, new coach, exciting coach. But if they don't win a trophy, I think that's another bad season for them. So that's why I put them there. Yeah, I'll put Spurs because, you know, Spurs, they're, they're going to have something wrong in their season. Yeah. And I put them eighth, but yeah, it could even go worse. They might sack Ange. Like, you just don't know, but... Yeah, so that's our uh, predictions for the 23-24 season. Um, when we do the edits, we're going to also add Google's uh, predictions on their ladder and the, those predictions we've just mentioned.
So yeah, hit the like button, subscribe, comments, and make sure. Um, so we're going to be doing the tips, um, Premier League tips on the podcast tonight. It will be uploaded tomorrow, but we're going to be doing every week, once a week, our Premier League preview. So talking about all the matches, we're going to be doing a lot of Premier League content content on the Touchline podcast. So stay tuned to all you Premier League fans, and yeah, that's a wrap. See you guys.